if we consider that in this position here uh, I have considered and this is something which has been uh, done in uh, several uh, several facilities now um, they have incorporated kind of um, wraps or uh, grade A air supply in front of the live elisers and they have purchased kind of uh, semi-automated system to load the freeze dryer that the, the, the vials are coming in some uh, platform and then you move the platform to the, to the freeze dryer and push the vials into the freeze dryer without any contact with the, um, with the operator. And this is why uh, regulators give us one year more to identify, to make some improvement of this process. Uh, if it takes too long time to improve this, then you can start uh, making an assessment, preparing a project, and look to some vendors to make the to make the work with them. Now, what are the key uh, the key process points? Uh, we need to compound with the with the media. Uh, compounding of gamma irradiated pepton bros. We need to make a first filtration of pepton bros, overlay of filtration vessels with sterilized filter or compressed air, incubation and visual infection, spinning of pepton, and then we need to incubate the filtered solution into a 2025 for seven days and another uh, another temperature we will see it in the next slide so 20 25 7 9 days 30 35 7 9 days and then gross promotion the requirement is to have some of the sorry some of the vials which are inverted like that you will uh, the product will be in contact with the stopper and you will be able to to check the um, to check the product if you freeze dry some product cartridges uh, ampoules are something which need to be considered in the risk assessment because these are products which are not very stable and you will have to consider that in your risk assessment uh, for, the, for the aseptic process simulation. The case study number two, uh, we have a high number of vials. The filling will take a long period of time. We have uh, freeze drying 72 hours how to make a good design for such operations. The hazard to be considered is sampling, weighing, and dispensing of the material. Preparing of sterilization and deperigenation of containers and closure coming into contact with the product. Subsequent handling. Aseptic condition, con connection and transfer. Formulation and sterile filtration filling and primary sealing, transfer to live elisers, storage and transfer of sterilized equipment, cleaning and sterilization of the product contact with equipment and vessels. These are the main requirements. The other identification are through me mechanical transfer via personal materials via airborne contaminants. We can have residual particulates, foreign metals, 
transfer of contamination from materials entering a controlled environment, transfer of, con of contamination by personnel, contamination generated by personnel, particulate and foreign matters, dust, dirt, debris, degradation of facility and equipment surfaces, endotoxin, infectious agents, biological agents, machine abrasions, and wear. These are all hazard identification, which has been identified during a risk assessment. We have used a fishbone diagram to do this, uh, to do this work. Uh, I know that you had uh, uh, quality risk management training uh, just before, so this is why I've not extended that much the program here. And we will consider uh, one part of this of this case study on the vials filling, because in this step we have we have uh, we are working on three shift and we will consider how we can make an aseptic process simulation using uh, during a three shift uh, period so we have the formulation of the vaccine transfer to freeze dryer freeze drying pre-closed vials we have seen that in the previous uh, case study and now here we have three shift, one morning shift, one afternoon shift, one night shift, and we have started again with the morning shift. With the morning shift, we are starting the filling, and then we are making a break. During the break, we have no personnel and no activities in the clean room. Then after, at the end of the morning shift and at the beginning of the late shift with the change of the shift, which is a critical point of the process, then we will have to consider to continue the filling. And then we will have a, again a break. And during the change from the late shift to the night shift, we will do again filling. And we will continue with a break and we will finish with the morning shift, the filling of the product. One point which is important, if we do product, if we do processes with manual operation, we have to consider what is required for personnel doing manual operations. And this is uh, really important. Um, we need to consider that each time in conventional filling lines with manual operation each time personnel are making such operation we need to make some gloves checking to be sure they do not bring contamination in the process and we need to make and to check the contamination without doing uh, wrong way of working. For instance, uh, some regulators have found that in aseptic manufacturing areas, operators were sanitizing their hands immediately before they touch the personal contact plates. That means that they reduce the contamination in the hands and this do not give 
the right result. And this is, uh, this is not the way to, to perform. The way to perform, I go out, I put my gloves, then this is okay. If, and now my gloves are not clean enough, I remove them and I put new ones and I can continue working. So, um, as well, uh, monitoring of personnel. These are points which has been identified by, uh, by, some, uh, by some regulators. Um, we need to use the environmental monitoring to identify environmental control issues and identify appropriate follow-up actions. And this is what I've said at the beginning with the contamination control strategy, with the quality risk management, we have to assess the risk, we have to re assess the hazard, reduce, identify the, uh, make the risk assessment, uh, reduce the risk, monitor the residual risk, and with this monitoring, we can review and make um, risk assessment on that and look at the trends. And this will give us information and we need to take them into account to improve our processes. If we don't do that, we will not be enough, we will not have enough performance. So the aseptic process simulation is an aseptic process and to be successful need to be made in optimum condition in optimum conditions. But we have to use the worst case condition for the operation to be carried out. Number of staff, simulation of inherent or unexpected operation, APS is part of the process validation. And APS, which is really important, is, past, is part of the process qualification. But APS cannot be a way to allow working in a non-compliant facility or non-compliant uh, process system. Thank you for your attention. I think I have uh, overtaken the time by two minutes. Apologize for that, but uh, I expect you have uh, you will have uh, some questions. I see that uh, we have uh, seventy two questions, so maybe we will find some of them. Yes, but first let us uh, launch the second poll and um, allow our attendees to complete them. So it has been launched. And again, if uh, take a little time for it to pop up on your screen. If you do not see it, then do look for the poll function on your platform on your device. Perhaps if you click on it, then you would be able to activate the poll. There are three questions again. Scroll through to answer the three before you submit. And we'll just leave this on for a couple of minutes. 